Hartley, welcome to the Harland Report. We are here in Texas speaking to a musician, music producer, artist, drummer, friend of Marvin Sapp, R. Kelly, and the great Lecrae, yes. whom we all admire so much, Ray Beatty. Yes. You are from the great city of Chicago. Chicago. Tell us a little bit about the music industry, yes. the Chicago. We call it Chi Town. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a beautiful city. Um, I was born and raised there. Mm -hmm. um, I was born and raised in the church. Uh, my dad was a uh, pastor, local pastor. So I was around gospel music all of my life. Uh, my, my mother was a, a speaker. My, my brothers were preachers. I believe the uh, cats and dogs were preaching. <laughs> so we were always around inspiration. So being around Chicago, you were inspired to do great uh, if you were in the church. Um, and what the church taught me is how to operate my gifts and talents that I had. Um, we didn't have commun community activities that would lend in support uh, of our gifts and our arts. So the church was the house, it was the grounds that we went on to actually develop these gifts and talents. And through the church, so many artists, you think just Ray Beatty, but there's not only Ray Beatty, but there's R. Kelly who grew up in the church. When I later on got a chance to meet him and come best, become best friends with him and play drums with him, our stories were similar. Uh, Kanye West grew up in Chicago. Common grew up in Chicago. We were all born, raised in the church. Our foundation was uh, the gospel. It, it, it was something about the, 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 the music that was behind the gospel uh, that pushed us forward uh, and wanted us to uh, go further in our careers. So uh, I grew up playing drums. Uh, my brother was a producer. His name is Percy Beatty. I stand on his shoulders because he uh, set, the, set the ground for me to actually travel and do great things in the gospel music industry. He played with the Winans, uh, BB and CC Winans. Um, I was a little kid watching him play with the Winans. He wrote a song for the great Whitney Houston and, uh, and BB and CC Winans called Hold Up the Light. My brother wrote that song. I got to see them perform this song on the Arsenio Hall show. And it, it started to uh, put something inside of me to say, hey, I think this is the direction I want to go with my life. So all I saw was excellence in terms of music, but in terms of the city of Chicago, I saw a lot of negativity. I saw poverty. Um, I saw us uh, uh, killing each other in terms of uh, African Americans. And I saw that it was because of number one, a lack of love, a lack of support for, uh, for that. That, uh, that the kids had in the community that in terms of wanting to uh, get out. They didn't know how to get out. They know how to scrap and survive. And they did the best that they could. But I saw music as a resource that I could use to get myself out of, that, out of the community that I was born and raised in. And so many of the artists that you see, being Lecrae probably as well, Marvin Sapp, who you mentioned, <clears throat> R. Kelly uh, especially, uh, these guys were in the inner cities of their communities, but they saw music as a way out to escape. And a lot of the guys, speaking of Lecrae, they speak about in their music about where they came from and how uh, the struggle was real and what they saw and what they see. But they used it as a platform to say, uh, this is what I want to do and this is what I aspire to do. And their music has now taken them to a level uh, of greatness, but they never forget, and we never forget about where we've come from and how hard it was for mom and dad. For me, it was five boys and one girl in a two bedroom apartment with two adults. So you can kind of, you know, understand where we come from. Uh, we didn't know we were poor though. We did not know, and most people don't really realize they're poor because they have a mom that's fixing food, that's taking care of the needs. You don't see her struggling and seeing her work two and three jobs. We don't see that. As kids, we're just seeing that we live in this community and we're friends with each other and we see, the part, we see stuff going on, but we also see it as a way of life. And as you get older, and like I said, when I saw my brother for myself, I saw my brother uh, aspire to do greatness in the gospel music uh, realm, it's, it gave me 
an idea and concept of what it means to be great and something to aspire to. Most people in the inner community, in the inner cities of uh, rural areas like Chicago, they don't have a brother who's doing greatness. So what they see is what they become. I saw something different, so I had, a, I had a chance to change the direction of my life simply because something pushed my brother to be great and I followed his greatness. And here I am years later, uh, I get a chance to play and become friends with one of the greatest uh, musical artists of our time, and that's R. Kelly. I played with him for seven years, and uh, one of the greatest times we had was when we uh, went in the studio and sang on this incredible song. Uh, that sticks with me today, this I Believe I Can Fly song. And uh, just to be in the studio, not even understanding that you're a little kid from the inner city of Chicago, and you're gonna be a part of one of the greatest songs written in the history of, uh, of music. It still right now gives me chills to understand where it is I came from. So Chicago, yes, there's a lot of crime that we saw. We saw fights with 40 people going at it in the streets with each other. We saw this with our own eyes. This is how we grew up. And I, I would see my father go out and try to break up 40 guys fighting. And uh, it gave me uh, hope to say, to have a father that was in that community trying to help these brothers come up because these are brothers that did not have a father. These 40 guys are in the middle of the street fighting because they did not have uh, a dad. They did not have a mom. They were being reared by their grandparents um, or by a caregiver. And so what I saw gave me hope. And I believe that pushed me to where I even sit today, uh, being here in Houston, Texas, uh, is because of the hope that I saw through, one, number one, my brother in the music industry, but also my dad, also building community, building, building fellowship with the people in our neighborhoods. <laughs> and it's so interesting uh, to, to listen to you because the creativity and oh, the ability yeah. to, to make something out of nothing. Yes. And, and imagine, I mean, we're from Europe mm -hmm. and all we ever do at home yes. is listen to you. Wow. You know what I mean? Wow. I think also, all you musicians, mm -hmm. you're not fully aware how much you impact wow. the younger generation with the stuff you do in Chicago and with the music industry you have here in, in the United States. You influence uh, people's lives and maybe that's why we particularly also like so much uh, people like Lecrae because yeah. uh, in, in my view he does something so needed mm -hmm. uh, in, in the Christian communities and I'm, I'm so happy for what's uh, happening with, with, with much of what he's doing at the moment too. And, and you know, the break off from, from some of this, um, yeah, you, you guys call it white evangelicalism, I don't know, you know, but I mean some of this stiffness. Yes. We need to be on the ball. We need, need to be in the marketplace. Yes. We need to be there uh, talking to everybody. Yes. Yeah. Um, you know, it's funny you mentioned that. Um, when, when I was with R. Kelly, uh, so, so many people, they see, um, they see it as it's a divide, but you know, what Lecrae is doing is trying to bring, uh, to do the same things that Jesus did. Jesus was at the, uh, at the well with the woman and the woman said, you can't talk to me. I'm a Samaritan, you're a Jew. He said, girl, stop tripping, <laughs> give me some water. And they had a conversation. Lecrae simply is creating conversation. Um, R. Kelly for years have created conversation um, and that conversation has co created community. And the people that don't understand it, you can't focus on them. And I believe the reason why Lecrae has had the success that he's had is because he's not spent a lot of time focusing on the naysayers. He's been focusing on his responsibility and that's to reach across the aisle, have the conversation, create community so that we can build bridges rather than tear them down, tear down walls. So. Be understanding him and seeing, seeing a guy like that and then seeing, coming back on the R&B side and seeing a guy like R. Kelly and watching them work and understanding where, they, where their work ethic comes from, it's a place of lack that they come from. There's a place of poverty that they come from. And most of the times when they're creating, they're creating their music because they, they want their music to fall on ears that they know are in lack. 
And that's exactly what Jesus did. Jesus uh, met with people and he had conversations with people most of the time that were in need, not the people that had everything together. And I think with Lecrae and his music, I'm proud of him simply because he's creating conversations that has not taken place in the 40 years, 47 years that I've been on this earth. We've had good gospel music that was good for people in church. Lecrae is creating a music now where people outside the church can understand and, and listen and say, I get that, I understand that. R. Kelly has done a great job of that because what he does is he talks about what people are going through on an everyday basis. That's why he continues to sell all these years, simply because he talks about what everyday people are going through. And uh, Lecrae has found that niche on our side, but he's, he's, done it, uh, he's done it in a way that has not been done in the gospel music industry. And that's why I believe that he's been uh, elevated to the level he is right now. And uh, as a young girl, uh, I was born and raised in Africa and, and moved to um, Europe when I was grown up. Uh, but as a young girl, f 14 years old actually, I went with a choir. I was in Norway just for a summer or for a few months. And I was able, I used to sing at that time, and I was so lucky to go to the United States and tour for three months. Oh, wow. And we went to um, uh, Los Angeles and Fresno and all over the place in California. And we went to the church of Andre Crouch and met with those people. And I remember this lady called Tata Vega. She Tata was Vega. Saying, oh, of course, I was not able to talk to her in any way or whatever, but I mean, we were there. And it impacted my life so much, serious impact, because I saw a kind of joyful type of uh, spirituality, you know, mm -hmm. not the stiff kind of stuff we have back in Europe. <laughs> You know, you get yeah. up, you say amen, you sit down and then you listen to somebody, you know, I mean, well-meaning and, and yeah, speaking I, nice yeah. words, I'm not saying, but yeah. I mean, it's so terribly white, to be yeah. honest, you know, and, and, and with my African roots and all, it, it really, it impacted my life, seriously. So yeah. I think you guys have something. Yes. And, and as I stated to uh, what you have with the music industry, you're impacting the whole of Europe. Yeah. With what you're saying in yeah. your lyrics and your music. Absolutely. Yeah. And mu music is a universal language. Yes, it Everybody is. Everybody understands music. When music comes on, music has the ability to do something um, that no other entity can do. It, it has done it for years. Uh, it's brought African Americans together with Caucasians. It's made people who never would have sat down with each other. It's made people sit down and sing along. It's, it's, it, it's, it's, a, it's an entity that God created for good. And he, 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 I believe he created it, uh, to, first of all, to bring him glory, but also to edify the body. And going back to Lecrae and going back to these different type of artists, that's what they're doing with their music. They're using it not to just be things in church that can, uh, that can uh, uh, support what's happening on a Sunday morning. But now we're listening in our cars. We're listening on our jobs. We're listening in the uh, subway stations. We're listening to this, into, to this type of music. And sometimes people are looking around and, and it's on a commercial now, you know, gospel music, it's on commercials. Um, it's, being, it's being widely received. For whatever reason, I don't know, but I believe the people that are doing it like Lecrae are not doing it for selfish gain. They're not doing it for fame or fortune. They're really doing it because they understand that there's a message and what their music delivers. And I believe it's because of that, their platform is beginning to get bigger and stronger and wider. And uh, gospel music, oh my God, I've been around it all my life. Um, I've been around uh, country music, I've been around jazz, I've been around so many different uh, genres of music, but gospel music has a way of touching and piercing the heart, whether it's through hip hop, traditional, urban, contemporary, inspirational, Gospel music has a way of hitting and touching the heart like no other music. And the way, again, a Lecrae has now taken it and uh, utilized his gifts and talents uh, and t attached his gifts and talents uh, along with the, the message of gospel music has been incredible. 
And he's a great revolutionary. Oh, uh, per, on God. a personal level, I would say I do really respect so much the revolutionaries yes. that are willing to do what they see is right. Yeah. yeah. And, and there needs to be, uh, frankly, we're here in the United States of America to examine what has gone so terribly wrong in you, your culture. Uh, it's such a rampant hatred between groups, hatred between the man and the woman, uh, rage uh, between groups and, and a divisiveness mm -hmm. uh, that we find uh, peculiar because you used to be the nation that uh, we Europeans used to look up to. Now we're, we're almost afraid to come here and we're wondering, are you bordering on civil war? What's the thing? And, 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 and at the same time, uh, we find it very strange because the Christians used to be so strong here. Mm -hmm. Now they're like silent in each, the, each their own small little groups and, and what we particularly wonder about is, is what's the thing about staying inside of church and mm. singing hallelujah, you know what I mean? Yeah. It, it's love, it's, it's nice to sing hallelujah, but, uh, but we're supposed to be filled with compassion and yes. be out on the marketplace. Yes. Why aren't Christians or believers all over the bars and speaking to people where people, I mean, Jesus, that's how well, he lived. And yes. I think in a time like this, we need to be out there. Yes. Yeah, and, and if anyone would be able to bring some warmth into society, mm -hmm. it really should it be, should be. Yeah. the church. So this is why I respect Lecrae yes. for breaking with yes. some of that hypocrisy, Absolutely. frankly. Absolutely. Well, 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 it's funny you mentioned that again. We've gotten to the point where we've gotten afraid. We've gotten afraid to have a voice because we're afraid of ridicule. We're afraid of uh, of people lash back, you know, what, what is going to happen? What is, what is the aftermath of what I say? We've gotten careful. Um, and if you really look at the church um, back in the early 70s and in those days, the church was the social fabric of your life. Meaning this, after church, everybody congregated in fellowship together with the communities. We had relationships. Nobody, it was, wasn't well thought out. People just did what they knew was right to do. Um, I'm taking this food over to so-and-so, so-and-so's house because she needs food. Uh, we're gonna go and pray for so-and-so, so-and-so. Uh, we, we were meeting people's needs. Somewhere along the lines, when social media became prevalent, um, people's opinions and started to matter about what they thought of you. So now when you get to church and you have different entities, uh, we're careful about what we do and what we say. When, if we're going to get back to where we, America, needs to be, we gotta take a stance. We gotta, I, I, I'm a youth pastor. So here, my stance is in youth ministry, we've started to take the kids outside of the four walls of the church. We've started to go feed the homeless. We've started to go build relationships with people uh, in Houston outside of the church because that's where Jesus did most of his work. And guess what? Songs started to come to me when I started to do this. When I stay inside the four walls, it's like sometimes I get clogged up with the four walls. But as I go outside and go into the different communities, it's my ideas. Um, uh, thoughts, lyrics start to come to me. There's a sign in our church that says, our time under God is now. And God told me to take a picture of it and just walk the community and just listen to his voice. It was in that time that he gave me a song to write for the world that's gonna be released later this year. Um, and it literally came through me just walking through the neighborhoods and seeing what's going on. And God told me, he said, as long as you're still breathing, there's still work for you to do, but you have to do the work outside of the four walls. And again, going back to R. Kelly, he walks to this day, as, success, as successful as he, as he is, he still walks the community. He stay, still stays in touch with what's happening in the different neighborhoods. So he wants to be able to write songs that meet the needs of the people. And that's why he still sells. When we get back to being, meeting the needs of the people, that's when, again, America, they're saying America, will be great again. It's when we start just going back and just meeting the needs of our communities. And I believe God allowed me to hook up and be a part of a church where the pastor 
has been doing that well before I got here. When I got here, none of this, even the building that we're sitting in, it wasn't here. The community, the restaurants, the different businesses, the organizations, they were not here. But I believe I hooked up, God associated me and attached me to a church and a pastor that has a heart for the community and for the people. That he's not just inside of four walls of a, of a building, but he's being a blessing to the community. I said all that to say, the reason why you have a successful Lecrae is because he doesn't care about what people say. He's on a mission. And when you're on a mission like he is, you take some darts, you take some wounds, some hits, some hits. But he understands his goal and his purpose is to build community. The same with the other artists that I mentioned, and as well as myself. When we can get and be, become a, a, a community that understands the importance of who we, God created us to be, then the rest of our days will be the best of our days. Thank you very, very much, music producer, musician, <laughs> artist, and a wonderful pastor here, uh, Ray Beatty, for taking the time to speak to us. And we now understand very well why we have so much to learn from you in Europe. And we're happy to take this time to talk to you because we'll be listening to these programs again and again mm -hmm. and learning from your wisdom to make society a warmer place.